good evening friends welcome for this third month of bible classes uh we have just lost father stan our companion our jesuit companion so even before we begin this class we will first as a mark of respect pay two minutes homage to father stan father joshua uh, brother joshua will play us a video uh, we will remain silent for this time no sound joshua no sound joshua can't hear play it again okay Dear Stan, I know you're looking from above. You are a prophet of our times, every tome of love. You kept your word that you'll always fight for what's right. You won the race, kept the faith, fought the good fight. Dear Stan, it breaks me now that you are a god. I get the feeling in this land justice will never dawn. For all the trials, allegations, and all the pain, I wanna tell you that your sacrifice won't go in vain. Dear Stan. You always stood for those in need, fighting for truth in your life. You lived the sacred creed. The fetters of injustice can't keep you in this debris. For once a cage with sang of peace is out now flying free. Dear Stan, you tell me that it's possible in a world full of pain. Love is possible in despair. A ray of hope is possible in this chaos. A better world is possible. Dear Stan, you tell me that it's possible. In a world full of hate, love is possible. In despair, a ray of hope is possible. In this chaos, a better world is possible. Dear Stan, I'm sorry that it ended such. We seemed helpless and afraid and couldn't do enough. Pardon our silence and pardon our inaction. Maybe now is the time we take your inspiration. Dear Stan, I don't know who's responsible. The cries of justice are now barely audible. The suffering that you face is all so illegal. Your death is a reminder that our silence can be lethal. Dear Stan, I know this feels for long. But never ever let me give up hope of a new dawn. And now your journey is done towards heaven. You've gone with the spark you left in us. Many more stands are being born. Dear Stan, you tell me that it's possible. In a world full of hate, love is possible. In despair, a ray of hope is possible. In this chaos, a better world is possible. Dear Stan, you tell me that it's possible. In the world full of hate, love is possible. In despair, a ray of hope is possible. In this chaos, a better world is possible. Uh, 
thanks, Joshua. We know in every century, Jesuits have made their contribution. And almost every Jesuit, every century has a Jesuit saint. And I'm sure that Father Stan Swami would be a Jesuit, current Jesuit saint in heaven and in for the church. Uh, with that, yeah, I would like to welcome William uh, for this, uh, this Bible class. Uh, he'll be uh, catering to us in this month. Uh, and most of you have seen him before. Some are new, some are old, but yes, they've known, uh, known William. Steve, I think Kosti's connection is gone. So yes, how you can begin? Yeah, so uh, we will begin uh, straight away. So thank you to Joshua and Kosti for uh, showing that one clip on Father Stan, and surely we'll continue his legacy. Surely. So with that, we come to our topic. That is today. Now we are going to study about Acts of the Apostles. Now, as usual, I would recommend to have your Bible with, your, with you. So whenever I ask you to open the Bible, you can open and you can see. So we are not going to, simply going to listen. We are also going to fact check. That whatever I say, it is true or not. What, what is the Acts of the Apostle says? Whether it is there in the Bible. So I request that if you are not ready with your Bible, and it is supposed that when you study something regarding the Bible, you need to have a Bible with us. So I request you to get your Bible ready with you so, so we can start. So as usual, I'll follow the same method. I will put the PowerPoint on the screen. So you will understand what I'm saying. So we'll begin with this. So we are going to study the Acts of the Apostles and uh, we have sent you the outline what we are going to study. So more are going, we are going to uh, see what is the outline is saying. Now, if I can project this, why can't I? So the, we are going to study the Acts of the Apostles. So just, just give me two minutes to start once again. So I will project my PowerPoint, give me at least one or two minutes. So without any problem, I don't think we can go ahead. So that should be some problem. So this is the part of our technology.
So as usual, what we are going to study first, we will see what is the purpose of this uh, writing this Acts of the Apostle. Then uh, who wrote this Acts of the Apostle? In which year he wrote the Acts of the Apostle? So on this, as usual, what we have, uh, we are going to see uh, first. Uh, that is basic information. And once we see this basic information, then we can go to a uh, proper theology. What is the theology of the Acts of the Apostle? Now, I don't know what is the problem, but uh, can you solve this problem? Why it is? Yeah. So, okay. Now, we are going to see what is the purpose of this Acts of the Apostles. Why this uh, book is written. So, basically, there are three or four purposes. First purpose is to give the first hand information about the spread of Christianity. And the second is the working of God in human history. So now, as, as I said, that we're not going to simply, I will say, and you believe, no, we are going, going to, uh, we are going, go, uh, we'll go to the Acts of the Apostle and we see how, how this purpose is fulfilled. So first purpose is to give the first hand information about the spread of Christianity. Now, let's, I request you open your Bible and the Acts of the Apostle. So I'll give you maybe a few seconds because I know we may not know the, where is the Acts of the Apostle, that book in the Bible. That is the basic information. It is in the, in the New Testament after the Gospel of John. So I will give you a few seconds to open your Bible and see what is written Acts Chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. What, what does it say? So, for your sake, I will read what is there. In my first account, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught. Now, question will come to our mind. Why this writer is saying, in my first account? So where is the first account? That is our question. Where is the first account? What is this first account? We don't know. But this writer, who, whoever is the writer, is saying, in my first account. So, first question we have raised here, which is the first account? Now, Theophilus, now we don't know who's this person. I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught. Until the day he was taken up to heaven, having first instructed the apostles he had chosen through the Holy Spirit. In the time after his suffering, he showed them in many convincing ways that he was alive, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking to them about the reign of God. Now the first question is, which is the first account? He's saying, in my first account. So which is the first account? So let's go to Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And we'll see there in chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. What is this first account? In chapter 1, verse 1, 1 to 4 says like this, many have undertaken to complete a narrative of the events which has been fulfilled in men in our midst, precisely as those events are transmitted to us by the original eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. I too have carefully traced the whole sequence of events from the beginning and have decided to set it in writing for you. So this is what is he saying. He's saying that what is the purpose of that? That you, I have carefully investigated. I have, I have carefully examined everything. After carefully examining, I have decided to write about the truth. So what is the purpose of this writing these acts? That we may know the truth. It is a record of truth. That is the idea of the, uh, the writer of the Acts of the Apostles. That all of us, we know the truth. So it is a record of truth. And then 
just now we saw in uh, what what i read after investigating everything carefully from the first then what i read that is a different translation but more or less what is the meaning of this that after investigating everything so that means the writer before writing this acts of the apostles or the gospel of luke has carefully investigated everything first so first he sat down he brought all the record he investigated carefully and then he has written the third point to write an orderly account so it is not written anyhow it is it, it is written carefully why carefully because he has investigated first and, and he says many have taken in uh, taken this task of writing so he is not the only person others have written but what is trying to say even though others have written i have taken it a task that i i investigate carefully after investigate carefully i am this i have decided to write an orderly account and it is about for to know the truth then what is this first hand information now once again we have to go to acts acts of the apostle so i request you now uh, now i'll tell you the gospel of luke and acts of the apostle the writer is the one only one person is the writer the writer is luke we will see soon how is he is the writer but always will go to and fro uh, sometimes will be in the acts of the apostle sometimes will go back to luke to see the connection also to see the development how he has developed in his account the record of truth what he says that i have written in orderly manner how he has written orderly manner so we'll go back and forth sometimes we'll go to acts of the apostles sometimes we'll go to luke so in, in acts chapter 1 was it where jesus commanded them that you be my witnesses my witness is to jerusalem in all judea of samaria and to the ends of the earth so you see there is a progression it begins with jerusalem because they are in jerusalem now uh, during the time of pentecost so begin with jerusalem then you go out of jerusalem that is judea and samaria and from there you go to the ends of the earth so the purpose of the acts of the apostle is this to show how the gospel went out and how the uh, they preached gospel from starting from jerusalem they went out to judea they went out to samaria to they went out to gentiles and finally to the ends of the earth that means rome they reached rome and with rome they stopped acts of the apostle so how the gospel spread it this first and information about the spread of gospel that is the purpose of this Uh, writing this acts of the apostle so the whole of acts is the story of how the preaching at rome emerged from the original commission the commission is this you be my witnesses my witnesses to jerusalem to judea to samaria and to the ends of the earth and whenever there were and there are difficulties problems also but they overcome this problem and they preach the gospel they fulfill that commission that is the first purpose the second purpose the working of god in human history so just now i read uh, from from the gospel of luke where uh, luke is saying what jesus said and did before being taken up into heaven in the sight of his followers so whatever jesus did and uh, he performed miracles then about his death whatever his teaching everything he mentioned in the in the gospel then he continues this story of the of his apostles and uh, first christian communities in acts of the apostle so there this is this uh, acts of the apostle gives us account or information how god worked in the life of jesus and how god is working in the life of the church so in the life of the church means who the apostles the first christian community and today to you and to me so he gives that uh, account how god continues to work 
it is not that god sent his son once and it's over no when his son was there god worked through him now he is not there or he is taken up but god continues to work in 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 history in in the church uh, through you and me so god continues to work that is the second purpose the third purpose is the working of the holy spirit in the plan of god so first we see uh, so we, uh, recently we celebrated the feast of the pentecost and we read this uh, narration how the holy spirit came upon them so so luke luke's account of pentecost pentecost what is when the holy spirit came upon them is the connection between the work of god in jesus and work of god in the believers what i just mentioned that work of god in jesus and work of god in believers there are some people they say some theologian they say now what we say the acts of the apostles so they say earlier this uh, the, the word of the apostles was not there the earlier name of this book was the acts the acts only so the meaning they are trying to say it can be the acts of the holy spirit so may not be the acts of the apostles but the acts of the holy spirit because the holy spirit is very prominent not only in the gospel of luke but also in the acts of the apostles very much emphasized and the fourth the point is this to show that christianity was the true successor to judaism so if you see there are there, there is opposition like jesus also had opposition from the pharisees on this here in acts of the apostles there also opposition but if you carefully examine the opposition not from ordinary people the opposition is from those who are in authority those who hold some post hold some office so one way is trying to show through this that christianity is not something different than judaism it is the it is the, the christianity is a successor of judaism and he is trying to show that so this we'll see when it will come to theology when we are going to study theology how luke is showing that christianity is not a new religion it is the outcome or it is the plan of god and it is it is so he has to he had to come out from judaism how is trying to show will say when it will come to the theology so uh, first we'll see the acts of the apostle is nothing else but the fulfillment of commission the commission was this in acts chapter 1 Acts chapter one verse eight. I will read for you. Acts chapter one verse eight. This Bible is making different translation, but the meaning will be the same. Jesus is telling his apostles, "What what does he say? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes down on you. Then you are to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria." Yes. Even to the ends of the earth. So, what is the commandment of Jesus? What commission Jesus gave to give them? That the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and then you will be my witnesses. Where? First in Jerusalem, then in all Judea, Judea and Samaria. That is out of Jerusalem, away from the uh, Jewish people, and finally. to the ends of the earth and acts of the for those days it was thought that rome is the last that is the end of the earth so so they all reached rome and with that acts of the apostle book is over so the whole narration is there how they first preached in jerusalem then how they went out of judea and samaria how they preached there then the paul got conversion And when Paul got conversion, how he went out and then he reached till till Rome. That is the acts of the apostle. It is giving what happened. So this commission is being fulfilled in Acts. So Jesus is what Jesus commanded in first chapter verse eight. The whole acts of the apostle is the story of this fulfillment 
of this commission. So first they preached in Jerusalem, that is chapter 1 to chapter 5. Then they went out of Jerusalem. There some, some, some apostles, they went out. And we too believe that St. Thomas came to India and we celebrated his feast on 3rd of July. So how they first preached there, and then they went out. But as uh, Luke was not with St. Thomas, so he did not write. He was with Paul and Peter, so he wrote about them. But it is an account how the Christianity or how the good news went out or how they preached uh, good news or the gospel, not only in Jerusalem, not only in Judea and Samaria, but to the ends of the earth. That is to Rome also. So this is the fulfillment of commission. So gospel spreads throughout the known world. First in Jews in Jerusalem, that Hellenists and Samaritans, then Gentiles at Antioch, Asia Minor, Europe, and finally in Rome. So the Acts of the Apostle is nothing else but the spread of Christianity throughout the world how there were obstacles, how there were difficulties, how there were problems, but they overcome everything and fulfill the mission. But it's not that the mission is, the commission is what Jesus said that we will be witnesses and with acts of the apostle, we have finished that commission. No, Luke is trying to show that it is possible. It is not impossible or difficult. Now we come to the author. Who is the author? First of all, we have to set that problem. We have to solve this problem. Once we solve this problem, then we can take someone's name who is the author very confidently. Now I cannot say that so and so is the author. That's why I see the author or the writer. So who is the author? So first we'll say internal evidence. Internal evidence means what? From the gospel or from the acts of the apostle, we see who is the author. Is it something mentioned in this? When we study the book of Revelation, when there we saw, it was clearly mentioned that John, I, John, write this. So he has mentioned his name. Something can be found here in this book, in the Gospel of Luke or the Acts of the Apostle. Is there anything there we can understand who is the author? First, we'll come to this, which we have seen just now, Acts 1.1. In the first book, so there he is, uh, Acts 1 1, just now we read, in the first account or in the first book. So when we say that is in the first book, so that means there is some first book and this is the second book. So Acts of the Apostle is the second book. So which is the first book that we went to look, look chapter 1, 1 to 4. And there we read that after there are so many. Have so many are writing and after carefully investigating, I too have decided to put an orderly account so that you may know the truth. So that was his uh, uh, ambition. That was his uh, idea to know the truth. So for us at this point, who is the author? First clue we got that the from Acts chapter 1 verse 1 is that Whoever is the author, he is the same author. So he, he has written the Acts of the Apostle as well as he has written the, gosp uh, the Gospel, the Gospel of Luke. That is the first clue we got here. In my first account, that means he has this, uh, there is something which is the first account and the Acts of the Apostle is the second account. So first clue, he, the same author for the Acts of the Apostle and for the, for the Gospel. Second clue, words, phrases, or style, vocabulary is similar that are found only in Luke and Acts. So many, just see, for all of us, we have certain style of writing. Uh, more, some, more or less words we use the same way. For the, or in our conversation also, we use some words very often, very uh, same words are often, but sometimes people tease also because of those words we use again and again. So here also same thing we find. So what one example I have given there, Luke chapter 23 verse 7. 
what is there in Luke chapter 23 verse 7? This is not that great example, but to understand, I have written that. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who also happened to be in Jerusalem at that time. So this is about Herod, how he mentions both the places about Herod. Uh, 427. Indeed, they gathered in this very city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. Herod and Pontius Pilate in league with the Gentile and the people of Israel. So what is this point? I, I will tell you what is this point. So here Luke makes this connection. In the gospel, he said that uh, Jesus was sent to Herod and Herod was there. And then he recalls that here in Acts that he, this, his anointed one, that Jesus was sent to Herod in, from Pontius Pilate in this city. So there is a connection, connection in the sense that uh, in, in the gospel he had told us that ha, Jesus was sent to Herod. And here he once again mentioned, ha, Jesus, this is the place where uh, Jesus was sent to Herod. So that's why we said, not only this is one example, but the style, the way he writes, more or less same. So then it gives us another clue that uh, the writer of the Acts of the, uh, Acts of the Apostle and the writer of the Gospel of Luke is the one, the same person. Then he was a companion of Paul. So we see Acts 16, 16 to 17. There he will mention we were going. We were going. And this is called the passages of the Acts. We, all of when he was talking about something, all of a sudden he will come to say like this that we are going. All of a sudden he will start speaking plural. So he is mentioned the that he was with Paul, chapter 16, 16 to 17. It was why we were on our way out to the place of prayer. We met a servant girl. So he says, we, we miss his Paul also there with him. So uh, Paul's name will come soon. The girl began to follow Paul. So he's saying we, we. So this is the second clue for us. First clue that he is the same author of both these uh, books. Second clue for us, he is a companion of Paul. Why is a companion of Paul? Because in the, in the Acts of the Apostle, in the book, he mentions we, we were going, when we were going, a slave girl came to Paul. So he was a companion of Paul. Not only in that, we can cross check. Now he says that he was with Paul, but whether Paul can say that he was with him. So when we come to Luke, uh, sorry, not Luke, uh, second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Second letter of St. Paul to Timothy, we can see there, chapter 4, verse 11. What Paul says there? Second letter of Paul to Timothy. I will give you some time to go to that reference. Second letter of Timothy. After Acts of the Apostle, then we have letters of St. Paul. So you find there, just before the letter to Titus, the second letter of Timothy. So there he says, chapter 4, verse 11, I have no one with me but look. I have no one with me but look. So then we get this idea. Huh? There in Acts of the Apostle, he said, we were together. Here when he is writing letter to Paul, writing letter to uh, Timothy, he's saying, no one is with me, only Luke is with me. Get this second clue that whoever is the writer is the companion of St. Paul. Or Colossians also 4.15, look, the beloved physician is with me. So this is another reference to show that 
not only the writer claims that he was with Paul, but Paul also claims that, ah, Luke is with me, or Luke, the beloved physician, is with me. Now, this was the internal evidence. From that, we know we don't understand still who's the hundred percent author, but more or less we uh, can conclude it is Luke. Why? Because of this uh, uh, first account, second account, vocabulary, style. Then, as well as uh, Paul is saying that he was Luke is with me. Uh, Luke is saying that I am with. I was with Paul. So that was the internal evidence. Now, external evidence is this. External evidence means which we cannot find in the Bible, but outside. So Muratorian fragments attribute Acts to Luke. So that is the very early fragments. They say it is uh, the Acts of the Apostle is written by Luke. And many church fathers like Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, and Irenaeus. We celebrated uh, the feast of Irenaeus sometime back, I think maybe two weeks back. So these are this Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, and Irenaeus, they are the disciples of the early apostles, or uh, they were the disciples of disciples of these apostles. So they are uh, in very early uh, 200 or 300 AD. So this, they claim that the Acts of the Apostles is written by Luke. So this is regarding the author. So Luke is the author they prove. So, but as, as usual, always I say, if you ask me prove hundred percent he is the author, no, that we cannot after all these years. But by this internal evidence, by these great people who are the disciples of the apostles, from them we learned everything. They claim that it is written by the author. We say, okay. So the date, so the, uh, when, it, when was it written? So it was written in 75 to 90 AD. The period is too much. Some say it is written in 62 also. Some say it is written in uh, up to 100. But the period is 15 years gap. But uh, uh, why you will see now. The first, first clue was it was written after the Gospel of Luke. How we know? Because once again, we can go back to Acts 1.1. After my first account. So surely it is written after the Gospel of Luke, which was written in 70 to 80 AD. So that's why we say it was written after that. Second, after Paul's arrival in Rome. So now let's come to this verse, chapter 28, verse 16. There we'll read that uh, this Paul reached Rome. Chapter 28, verse 16. Upon our entry into Rome, Paul was allowed to take a lodging of his own. See, after our arrival, first ah means that the writer, the author Luke is with him. So our arrival in Rome. So Paul reached Rome. So historically, Paul reached Rome in 60. So surely after 60, it is written because Paul cannot reach before that or he cannot write before that Paul has this. Here he mentions that when we reach Rome, so Paul reached Rome in 60. So after 60 AD, it is written. Before the execu execution of Paul in Rome, Paul in Rome, so I have put question mark. Paul was executed in Rome or martyred in Rome in 65. Surprisingly, nothing is mentioned about Paul's martyrdom in the Acts of the Apostle. So why he has not written, we don't know. So if it, the question is this, if it's written between 75 to 90 AD, he should have written this, that Paul, after Paul went there, Paul was killed there. But nothing is written. Maybe before, before the execution of Paul in Rome, so we don't know. But uh, Paul reached 60 AD, then Acts mentioned that Paul lived there for two years, chapter 28, 30 uh, says that Paul lived there, that is the end, almost the end. For two full years, Paul stayed, stayed on in this rented lodging. So Luke says that two years he stayed there. So if he reached in 60 AD, 
then 60 to 80. But nothing is mentioned about his martyrdom. So we don't know why he's not returned, why he's not. But what the scholars say that it is written between 75 to 90 AD. Now the audience. Now audience we know to whom it is written. So audience is the Theophilus. So once again, Acts 1-1, uh, where uh, uh, Luke says that after my first account or after my first book, Theophilus, I'm writing this again. So it is written uh, to Theophilus. Now, who is this Theophilus? We don't know. So he may be a catechumen. Why? Because in Luke chapter 1, 1 to 4, he says, because he was instructed in faith. So he's instructing him that may be a catechumen. We don't know. Maybe catechumen. Or maybe a friendly government official. Why? Because in Greek, Luke addresses him trusteste indicating a person of high social status. So we don't know who's uh, Theophilus. We try to understand. Maybe a catechumen. Why? Because Paul is saying that I'm instructing you in faith. Second, maybe a friendly government official. Because the way Paul addressed, uh, sorry, Luke addressed him. Or maybe his patron. Maybe he's uh, in a term... Uh, uh, benefactor, maybe his benefactor, Theophilus is uh, Luke's benefactor. We don't know, but it is written to, to Paul, or he may be a saint convert. We don't know, but it is written to Theophilus, and it is written for you and for us or for me. Why it is written for us? Because this. Uh, the Acts is written to show us how Christianity from Jeru began with Jerusalem and reached till the end of the earth. How from Jerusalem to Samaria to Judea it came to Rome. How it spread it. So he wanted to give us that information, first hand information. So that's why he's, he has written this account not only for Theophilus but for us as well. Now this is structure of the Acts. Check the structure of the Acts of the Apostle is this, there are so many ways this book can be divided. But basic, which is useful for the, us, is this to divide in these two sections that is, Acts of Peter and Acts of Paul. So, first one to twelve chapters dedicated to Acts of Peter, then this focus is shifted from Peter to Paul. Then Paul takes over from chapter 13 to 28. Peter will come now and then. But the focus, the, the, the camera, camera will go after Paul. First it is on, uh, the camera is focused on that, that uh, what you call highlight or the, the bulb, what bulb, uh, which focus, that focus is there on Peter. Till chapter 1 to 12, we follow Peter, wherever Peter goes, we go there, what Peter does, how Peter cures people, how Peter, uh, Peter is preaching, we will see that. The focus is Peter. But then, after uh, chapter 12, we'll see Paul's conversion, and then uh, we go, go uh, with Paul. Wherever Paul goes, whatever he does, we see that one. The focus is on Paul. But what Luke does, Luke introduces Paul beforehand. He, he introduces Paul in the martyrdom of Stephen. From there, he introduces Paul. And slowly, he begins there with Paul, introduces Paul, and then soon, Peter go, takes back seat, and Paul takes front seat. And then, till Paul goes to Rome. Then we are, we are told that he, he goes to Rome. In Rome, he stays for two years. So basically, uh, so there are so many ways they have divided these uh, acts. But the, base, uh, the structure basically is this, that 1 to 10, Acts of Peter, 13 to 28, Acts of Paul. So Acts 13, chapter 13, verse 2, we have this transition. Chapter 13, verse 2 says that the Holy Spirit will say, set apart for me, Barnabas and Paul. And this is the transition. Focus is shifted from Peter to Paul from here. Chapter 13, 
verse 12 what uh, chapter 13 verse 2 what it says on one occasion while they were engaged in the liturgy of the lord and were fasting the holy spirit spoke to them set apart barnabas and soul for me to do the work for which i have called them set apart for me barnabas and soul so this is the transition from here we'll focus on paul so that's why we make this two what you call two uh, structure is in this divided into two acts of peter and acts of paul so in in chapter 13 verse 2 is the transition period focus is shifted from peter to paul so what is the few characteristics of acts what is uh, so first is summaries are used to provide narrative transition so look look so this one uh, what you call it is that he summarizes everything he summarizes and then he moves to next uh, next episode or next event so we'll see few example so we'll come to chapter 5 verse 42 how he summarizes there summaries are used uh, he summarizes everything whatever happened he summarizes and then moves to the next point or next topic so chapter 5 verse 42 how he summarized the, uh, I will read for you. Chapter 5, verse 42. Day after day, both in the temple and, and ho at home, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news of Jesus the Messiah. So he, so in the chapter 5, he has shown us how the apostle went on preaching, uh, how the apostle uh, cured people, how the apostles preached them, how they baptized them. And at, at the end of the, uh, this uh, chapter 5, verse 42, he summarizes everything. Day after day, both in the temple, at home, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news of Jesus the Messiah. So he summarized everything with one sentence, what he has written on top. Not only that, we'll see one more example. See, chapter 6, verse 7 also there also he summarizes beautifully what they were doing the word of god continued to spread the word of god continues to spread so he did not say anything that he, here there that he says but he once he summarizes everything in one sentence the word of god continued to spread chapter 9 verse 31 Chapter 9, verse 31, how he summarizes again, let's say, chapter 9, verse 31. Meanwhile, throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, the church was at peace. It was being built up and was making steady progress in the fear of the Lord. At the same time, it enjoyed the increased consolation of the Holy Spirit. So once again, he summarizes how the, there was peace and how the church in Galilee, Judea and Samaria was being built up. And they also enjoyed the presence of the Holy Spirit. Once again, he summarizes. So summaries are used to provide narrative transition. So 1224 also, these, these are the all summaries. 1224 also, 1920 also. To show narrative transition, he summarizes in one sentence whatever has happened. So we'll see the last one, chapter 19, verse 20. Thus did the word of the Lord continue to spread with influence and power. So chapter 19, verse 20 also. The word of the Lord continued to spread. So he summarizes everything, whatever. And I said the purpose of this uh, Acts of the Apostle is to show one, one of the purposes, to show the spread of Christianity, how the word of God continued to spread. And here also, he will give all the information, but then he will summarize. The word of the God continued to spread. So summaries are used to provide narrative transition. Then, 
when you in this book only will come to know that the name christian was given at antioch let's go to that was for our knowledge it is beautiful how we where or why and how and when we the people who practice this kind of religion are called christians so this is good for our general knowledge also so chapter 11 26 so how where when those who follow jesus were called christians when why where will come to that chapter 11 verse 26 Once he had found him, he brought him back to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and instructed great members. It was in Antioch that the disciples were called Christians for the first time. So see, now you, I now our general knowledge is increased. Where this name to this. kind of people those who follow jesus christ are called christians how when what so first our general knowledge is increased chapter 11 acts of the apostle chapter 11 26 is telling us it was in antioch that the disciples were called christians for the first time so this is the general knowledge question now for us how and when this christians or the the followers of jesus were called christians oh then we know it was in antioch that the followers or the disciples of jesus were called christians for the first time then the first council of the church we find here and first apostolic decree also we find here So now we know in the church there are twenty-one economical councils, and the last one we have witnessed is that the Second Vatican Council. So before that, the First Vatican Council, but the Second Vatican. And nowadays, if you are doing theology, you have to come across this or study the Second Vatican Council because that is the landmark. So, but first council of the church was took place during apostolic time only. during the time of acts of the apostle and that mention it is mentioned in in the acts of the apostle the first council of the church that is chapter 15 was 1 to 21 first council of the church we see council at jerusalem council of jerusalem that is the first council and the first apostolic decree what decree they uh, produce see chapter 15 verse 20 we should merely write to them to abstain from anything contaminated by idols or illicit sexual union from the meat of strangled animals or from eating blood so that's why they're saying we should write to them so that's why we call this is the first apostolic decree but the first council of the church that is we call the council of jerusalem was taken place during apostolic time itself In that time only they started this practice whenever there are problems whenever there is something wrong come together discuss and come to conclusion so the first council what was the problem there their problem was was this during the time of um, council of jerusalem that is the first council that just see now what happened from all those people they were jews when they were converted to christianity so by by their religion they have to circumcise so when the gentiles become christians problem is there whether they have to circumcise to become christians one group was saying that no they have to circumcise first that means what to become christian they have to become jews first then become christians then in this council they decided no in a gentile to become christian he doesn't have to circumcise he can become christian by baptism baptism makes you christian not your circumcision so that was the first council of of the church that's the council of jerusalem we find here 
in the first apostolic decree. Now we'll see, we have only four minutes. So, so I think we'll stop here only uh, because this will take some time. So we, what we'll do, we have four minutes. If you have any question or any comments to make, we can do that. Because the next point we need, we have to go back to Acts of the Apostle to check whether it is correct or not. So we'll stop here and we'll have some some question answer or some simply comment or some suggestions you want to give. We can give the suggestions also. Any point not understood? Anyone? What is it? Any point not understood by anyone? Yeah, something is not understood or some question or any suggestions you want to give that also we can give. Is the speed okay? People are understanding. You all can unmute yourself and speak. Please unmute and speak. Yes, Father, it is very clear and uh, it's slow enough to grab the Bible. So, okay. Will uh, you be sharing the PowerPoint as you did for the previous the revelations, please? Yes, yes. The PowerPoint also will be available and the YouTube link. This has been recorded and been uploaded on the YouTube. It will be available as well. Okay. Thank you. For Thank you. Is the speed okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's right up. Yes, fine. Morning. Yeah. Morning, friends. Morning, friends. What happened? Huh? Yeah. Any questions? No, father. Any homework you're giving, William? <laughs> no income, no homework. <laughs> so no homework this time. So next time there'll be some homework. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now only do the now do the revision. Write down whole box of the apostle in your hand. Pardon me. Acts <laughs> of the apostle in your by your hand. Oh. Uh, no, at least they can go on. We will they can go, it. <laughs> at least they, they can go and verify. <laughs> they can go and verify the author of the gospel back and forth and make sure it is Luke. That was the kind of Yes, we know it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then we can call it a